Ever heard of Eddie Fisher? Not the way you're about to, his name that echoes through the corridors of infamy. Buckle up, because this isn't your grandma's love story. How Eddie Fisher betrayed every woman. A man who serenaded the world with his voice, yet couldn't harmonise his heart. Imagine a life where love was a melody, but fidelity was a myth. The story of a troubadour who sang of love, yet couldn't find it within himself to stay true. What led this iconic heartthrob to betray every woman he held? From Debbie Reynolds to the intoxicating allure of Elizabeth Taylor, a seduction few could resist. But this isn't just about Elizabeth, it's about Eddie Fisher. A man whose life became a symphony of treacheries. Meet Eddie Fisher, a famous singer from the 20th century, loved by many in the 1950s. But his wonderful singing got mixed up with some dark life events. Eddie's love life and marriages to Debbie Reynolds and later Elizabeth Taylor became a big deal. It caused a lot of attention and making a Hollywood scandal everyone talked about. That incident, of course, cemented the status of the pop vocalist as an incurable ladies' man. Eddie Fisher is sure one of the true American music icons of his time. He served humanity with his unique voice and established his place among the big names the pop genre has ever produced. Eddie Fisher, a man loved by fans, was seen as an amazing person by his friends and well-wishers. People who knew him well thought he was a good and decent guy. He had a strong and clear singing voice that many people loved, especially teenage girls. His charming personality and charisma made him very popular. Later on, his reputation suffered because of gossip in the media. It is projected that Eddie Fisher sold millions of records with 32 hit tracks. Critics say his fame was heightened by his 1955 marriage to another dearly loved American talent, Debbie Reynolds. While the opposing school of thought believed that the same marriage caused his name to be smeared with filth on the pages of tabloids, I still recall how Fisher's marriage with Reynolds was presented in the media. They were flaunted by mainstream as America's favourite couple. The birth of their two awesome children cemented this label and made them a unique celebrity family. Was Eddie Fisher one of the original Hollywood bad boys, as the gossip media had suggested? He had a scandalous personal life, with struggles involving impulsive actions and getting married more than once. This meant that his problems were often talked about in the news, but things got intense when he started having a romantic relationship with his friend's wife. She was a big Hollywood star, none other than Elizabeth Taylor. An action that is today talked about as Hollywood's great betrayal. The first time I heard about the above phrase, I was keen to know why and what happened. A media friend of mine told me how the term is used by gossip media when describing how Eddie Fisher's incredible attraction he was so smitten by Elizabeth Taylor that she went behind her close friend Debbie Reynolds' back and took her husband, Eddie, after her own husband's sudden death. The media couldn't stop talking about this situation. People learned about a big love triangle between Fisher, Reynolds and Taylor. This was a famous love story that caused a lot of commotion in the news all over the world. Fans of Elizabeth Taylor were very surprised and upset. They couldn't believe she allowed herself to be drawn in by Eddie Fisher's charm, to the point of breaking up her friend's marriage. Debbie Reynolds was only 26 when Eddie Fisher abandoned her for another woman. Not just anyone in that matter, but Hollywood Cleopatra personified the most gorgeous woman in the world. When the news first came out, many people who loved Eddie Fisher were worried about how the scandal would affect his successful career. Our worries came true because the scandal ruined his career and his reputation. All the attention and talk about the situation made Elizabeth Taylor famous as a powerful and captivating actress, and some of us were asking what is wrong with being as handsome and charming as Eddie Fisher, if not that the beautiful ladies are sure to make the man fall. This was happening at the very height of Reynolds' superstardom. It's only the god of love and emotion that can explain why he began an affair with Taylor after Mike Todd's demise following an ill-fated plane crash. At the time, you read banner headlines screaming letters like Will Liz break Eddie's heart too? What are they saying about Liz and Eddie now? Exclusive Liz and Debbie's private talk about Eddie and many others as the scandal unfolded. 
Debbie Reynolds was furious. She told everyone how Eddie Fisher had hurt her and seemed to have hurt others too. He was so charming that many women wanted to be around him. Even as a child, Fisher knew he had a powerful destiny to become a celeb, which must be fulfilled with his pretty physique and vocal prowess. Scandal and heartbreak at a point manifested on his way to fame. He was loved and would continue to be missed by his four offspring in the person of Carrie, Todd, Jolie and Trisha Lee. Fisher became a teen idol at a time when the first generation of rock and roll were being propagated. Experts say that Eddie Fisher was a singer who was liked by many people. He became so popular that Coca-Cola chose him to represent their brand and gave him a big contract worth one million dollars. The company headlined his initial TV series known as Coke Time with Eddie Fisher. When rock music became popular, cooler and good-looking guys like Elvis Presley, who were very popular, started to do even better on the billboard charts than Fisher. With all the happening around him, it became inevitable that his career would dwindle. That was how Fisher's musical talent fizzled out, though it allowed him to become the heartthrob of Hollywood women. This, of course, led to those string of infamous celebrity marriages and divorces that even led to substance abuse and addiction to prescription pills. He also saw the handwriting on the wall of what would become the fate of his career. In his memoir, Been There, Done That, Fisher talked about his romantic escapees and the entanglements thereof. It must have outshined his artistic talent. It is not the music that people remember most about me. It's the women, he stated. Even though nobody could have imagined that Taylor and Reynolds would ever forgive each other, they act together in a movie without getting into a fight. The impossible happened when recently the epic friendship was rekindled as they appeared in the ABC movie These Old Broads. Years before Fisher's charming ways caught their attention, Taylor and Reynolds were buddies. They were 17 years old at the MGM Learning Studio. None of them knew that their mutual love and interest in Fisher would bring them pain and separation. Appearing together again in a show indicated that the two legendary female icons had truly forgiven each other. But for Eddie Fisher, his career never forgave him. A native of Philadelphia, born in 1928, Fisher was the fourth in line of seven kids of Jewish immigrants who arrived in America for greener pastures. But with many mouths to feed, Fisher's parents had to struggle to provide for their children, including Fisher himself, who spent most of his childhood in very poor conditions. But fate eventually turned things around for them. His father, Joseph Fisher, survived a near-death accident that brought some unexpected happiness to the family. Insurance reportedly gave them $5,000, which was a lot of money for them. With this, his father started a small business and young Fisher worked as a cleaner there. Unfortunately, the business didn't do well and Fisher's family lost everything. It was a tough time for them. Fisher and his brother had to sell things door to door to make money. They looked so skinny and weak that people felt sorry for them and often gave them extra money when they bought things. Fisher's singing talent began to show when he was still a kid and it became even clearer in high school. People could tell he had the potential to be a star and this talent became a way for his family to make a living. He was 12 when he made his first appearance on the radio at WFIL, a Philadelphia radio station where he earned $25 weekly pay as a kid. This was where young Fisher started learning celebrity lifestyle. A man helped him who soon became his mentor and second father, Skipper Dawes. Once upon a time, Dawes played a big role in Fisher's radio appearances at WFIL. They got along well and had similar views. Fisher was so loyal to Dawes that he disagreed with anyone who didn't see things their way. Fisher even left high school and Dawes became his personal teacher, but their friendship didn't last. After Fisher parted ways with Dawes, he got a job with Buddy Morrow. Buddy Morrow was amazed by Fisher's voice, so Fisher joined his band called the Buddy Morrow Orchestra in New York City. Fisher left in a hurry after getting the approval of his mum and siblings. They saw him as a big brother and wished for him to become a famous singer. But becoming a star wasn't easy for Fisher. He faced challenges including some unsuccessful shows. He also missed out on a big opportunity because he was focused on something else. His good looks got him attention and offers to be a star were coming his way, but he didn't notice them. 
though mainly because he was too loyal to his employers, believing that his singing talent and not his prettiness should make money for him. At one point Fisher had to come back home for a while. During this time he felt embarrassed and upset. This experience taught him a valuable lesson about using his good looks to his advantage. When he joined Grossinger, Fisher had a better experience. He turned on his natural charm and charisma to match his amazing voice. One evening, after Fisher's performance received loud applause, Eddie Cantor jumped onto the stage. He announced to the audience that Fisher was destined to be a great singer. This endorsement changed Fisher's life forever, and the two started a nationwide tour. Sooner he was given a contract by RCA record label where he launched his music career. His appearance on a popular television show saw Fisher's voice getting the attention of reviewers nationwide. He later performed at the Riviera, where his audience was agog with adoration. A star was born. Fisher quickly became a teen idol and ruled the music charts. His fame was so big that movie makers wanted him to try acting in their films. I heard that he got a street named after him because lots of excited young girls would come out to show how much they liked him. They would scream his name or his songs. As he got more famous, he got richer too. He thought money could fix everything, even using it to try and stop his mum and dad from getting divorced. But sadly, that didn't work. Sadly, Fisher got sick during his big fame and had to take medicine. But he ended up taking too much medicine and got addicted. It was simply because it made him feel good and helped him sing better. Although none of all these things was as scandalous as his romantic flings, a writer said he saw women as another way to get high, and because of his natural attraction it meant more and more women daily. As a good-looking, young, gifted and rich vocalist, it was only a matter of asking before rich and famous women come running to him. This would not have helped his movie career, the reason MGM studio worked hard to match him with the cutest darling of the time, Debbie Reynolds. The calculations scaled through as the two fell in love. Their union became the most talked about issue in the media with all the fanfare, and after they got married all the attention and excitement around them brought in even more money. MGM and Coca-Cola chose them to represent their products, so they became like special spokespeople for these companies. People talked about Fisher being in romantic relationships with many famous actresses. He even said he was close with Marlena Dietrich in a special way, even though she was 27 years his senior. An encounter he allegedly said took place in her mirrored bathroom. People have also said that influential Dinah Shaw, Angie Dickinson and Kim Novak were also involved. Others in Eddie Fisher's long list of romantic escapes will be Betty Davis, Mia Farrow and Juliet Prowse, not forgetting, of course, Anne Margaret and Judy Garland. I guess the list is endless. Apart from his scandalous affair with glamorous Taylor that became the one thing most fans remember about him today, he also married two more women, the likes of Terry Richard for about a year or so and Betty Lynn, who remained with him from 1993 until her demise in 2001. You must have been intimidated about the historic scandal. You can as well ask what led to the hullabaloo. It seems the affair between Fisher and Taylor was taken place behind Reynolds' back without her knowledge. She learned about it when Fisher unintentionally ended a phone conversation with Richard Burton, who was also in a relationship with Taylor at the time, and Richard talked about the affair with Fisher during the conversation. I still recall what Taylor said when the, some say famous, others say infamous, Gossip columnist Hedda Hopper asked her about the ensuing scandal in an interview. The Cleopatra star did not appear remorseful about it. I'm not taking anything away from Debbie. She never really had it. You can't break up a happy marriage. She was quoted insinuating that the marriage between Fisher and Reynolds was already in danger before she came into the picture. On what Mike Todd, Taylor's recently departed husband, would say if he was alive to see the epic drama unfolding about Fisher, Taylor told her fans that, Mike is dead and I'm alive. What do you expect me to do? Sleep alone? At the time, the lyrics favoured Reynolds as she gained the public sympathy against Fisher. She put the heartbreak behind her and went on to marry her second husband, Harry Carl. Fisher soon got a dose of his own heartbreak, when Taylor later abandoned him to be with Richard Burton, sometime in 1964. After suffering knee, back, hearing and eyesight problems at different times in his later years, even had surgery. 
he became scarce in the public space. Eddie Fisher later broke his hip, leading to a hip surgery that he unfortunately could not survive. He died at the age of 82. There's so much more fascinating stories and mysteries waiting for you. Watch why Audie Murphy pulled a gun on his wife. Click now to uncover the shocking truth.